today on CityCast Madison. Have you ever been scrolling through social media and seen those epic videos of downtown Madison? The gorgeous sweeping views of Lake Monona and the state capitol, all shot from above like you were a bird. If you haven't yet, you need to. They're the work of Sam Lee and his collection of drones. Bianca Martin caught up with the man behind the camera, and he wants you to be in his next video all about Madison. It's Tuesday, May 30th. I'm Molly Stentz, and here's what Madison's talking about. Sam, hello. Hello, Bianca. Thank you for having me. Great to meet you and the whole team. Yeah, I'm excited. Of course. Well, first of all, I just want to say thank you because you've shown me Madison places I've long known in ways I've never seen before. How the heck are you doing this? <laughs> I don't know. I think it's uh, just using the a little creativity and the tools I have available like drones to just kind of show Madison from, from a perspective many people haven't seen it before. And I think your story is pretty similar to what I hear. It's like people are like, oh, my God, like... <laughs> that's Madison or like, oh my God, you make Madison look so like beautiful or you make it look like it's out of a movie. And it's, it's really awesome to hear that I can showcase the city that so many people call home in that way. Yeah. I mean, that's actually like out of a movie, like it almost, you can add some like romanticism to it. Like I think the first shot I saw of yours was, you know, up State Street looking at the Orpheum Theater sign. And I, I've loved that stretch of Madison my entire, you know, experience here and um never seen it that way and it was just scorched i'm like who's doing this oh my gosh it's it's happening again it's happening again because it's on social media got a super popular account um i are you are you a long time madisonian like how long have you been been here doing this yeah i've been in madison since 2014 so i went to school at uw um and then after college i just stuck around you know i love madison yeah it's definitely a special place and you're capturing it in new ways. And I just wanted to ask, like, is it easy to fly a drone? I would say it's not it's not hard. Um, the drones nowadays, they can they they're linked up to GPS so they can just hover in the Interesting. air. Interesting. I've done things where I'm like flying my drone. I have to like, you know, answer a phone call real quick. The drone's just hovering up there. I'm on my phone. No big deal. <laughs> <laughs> the real issues come when you start flying it, right? People crash into things. People aren't careful, et cetera. Um, so definitely, definitely can be lulled into a false sense of security, but they're not too hard. Yeah. And so, I mean, you talked about the possibility for crashing into things. How are drones regulated in Madison? Like, are some places more restricted than others? Yeah. So basically, the governing body is the FAA. They're going to be, I mean, they're the same people that, you know, police the uh, planes flying in the air. So anything totally. in the air, you have to kind of go through the FAA and work with your airport that might be nearby. So I have to, whenever I'm flying within the airspace, I have to make sure that they know. I have to make sure the FAA knows. And luckily nowadays, you can just request authorization through an app on your phone. So literally minutes before I want to fly, I can be like, hey, I want to fly at 300 feet in this area around the Capitol. And I can get approved almost immediately. And then like the only other thing is just like the capital is uh I think technically a state park, like the lawn itself. So you're not allowed to fly like if you're standing on the Capitol lawn, but you usually can just take, you know, step on any side street and you can take off from there and fly around the Capitol. This is fun. It feels a little bit like an adventure, like a, a video game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like uh, you have to deal with a lot of random people too who come and yell at you for flying drones. And you're like, I swear, I swear it's legal. I swear I'm doing everything by the book. But you, busy you bodies. Are, exactly. Yeah. Just people who are <laughs> just like, concerned you're peeping into their homes or something. I'm like, I'm, I swear I'm just taking pictures of the Capitol. I'm not focused on you. I guess that's kind of awkward if someone is saying, are you looking into my home? I'm like, no, there's, there's nothing interesting there. I did that. <laughs> I already looked two weeks ago. <laughs> I already covered that. 
<laughs> I already checked it out. That's not what I'm doing now. <laughs> no, that's funny. Um, yeah, so you actually, you have to get permission. Yeah. Do you ever get denied, like, when you want to, like, go to a certain spot? Like, you might be obstructing, that sort of thing? Or is it typically, like, green light? Um, I'd say, like, most of I mean, like, if I ever, if I ever tried to fly around, like, Camp Randall during a Badger game, I'd get denied instantly because they put, like, a... I'm not sure the specifics, but I think like a mile no fly radius around the around the stadium while there's a game going on. Other things like like concerts on the square, like you might be good to fly by the FAA, but concerts on the square doesn't want anyone to be, anyone to be flying over them. So there's little things like that, but never like a hard no. It's usually just like following. Like a like a balance between following what the FAA says with the airspace and then following etiquette with a lot of these events and stuff like that. Yeah. So there are a couple of things about drones that I don't know. So what's the difference between a standard drone and first person view? Or yeah. So both types of drones are very popular. Uh, standard drones are kind of like you can usually just buy them right on Amazon or something like that. And like I said, they usually have GPS, so they hover in midair. And then you have first person view drones. A lot of these are custom built, but they're basically like a full manual drone. You're controlling the throttle. There's no GPS. You can do flips. You can go 90 miles per hour. Um, You're basically unlocking. 90 miles per hour? 90 miles per hour. And I think some can go even faster. So it's basically like learning how... I don't Are know. you up there Tokyo drifting? <laughs> it's pretty much like that. It's like driving a regular car versus being like on a drift track. Kind of like that comparison of how the two drones work. I, have you ever crashed a drone? Oh, I've crashed plenty of drones. Um, <laughs> it's just part of the like part of the part of the sport. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're putting especially when you get into like more of the commercial like camera work like you're trying to get angles that no one has gotten before. So ultimately you're probably going to crash a couple drones along the way. Hey, CityCast Madison, it's Michael Zibiak. While CityCast Madison works hard every day to connect you with the stories that matter most, I'm working in the background, making sure that our listeners are connecting with the best that Madison has to offer. So what does that look like? It means meeting with the people who make Madison what it is, the business owners, the stakeholders, the decision makers, the Madisonians who book the concerts you enjoy, the exhibits you can't miss, and who open the new restaurants you have to try. If this sounds like you, let me help you get your message out to the city's best audience with an ad right here on the CityCast Madison podcast. Shoot me an email at ads at citycast.fm and let's connect. Well, so you did mention that someone might think like, oh, you're looking into my space. Like, do you have your own drone etiquette you follow? Yeah. So, I mean, I generally try not to take pictures of like residential buildings from close up. I mean, a drone's pretty wide angle. So even the the drone's really close to like, it's a wide angle point of view, right? So even if I'm really glad close to an apartment, I'm not going to be able to really see inside of it. Um, I've had things where I'm flying for like commercial real estate buildings. So like some of the high rises here in Madison and it's, that's been probably the closest awkward interaction, but they send emails out to like all the residents. They're like, Hey, some guy's flying with a drone. Like, just so you know, um, they're going to be flying like between like four and 6 PM. Don't be alarmed, but it's still, it's weird. Really? Like, well, you still see people like that. Like, so I was actually getting, cause I was filming for this commercial real estate company, I'm filming close-ups of the residential buildings. And so I can actually see inside these people's homes, but everyone, like people were on their porches, they're waving. I had a couple people like approach me with questions about just like my drone in general. And so everyone was pretty amenable to me being up in the air. Um, so luckily no like real intrusive run-ins yet, but that's probably the closest one. Do you think that they violate people's privacy? I mean, you kind of, you are the, a professional. You were asked by the, you know, the buildings to do this work. But I'm thinking, well, I mean, maybe I'm just thinking like anyone can get a license, that sort of thing. Yeah. I mean, if someone wants to be a real creep, it's very easy to do so. And I'm not sure 
I'm really not sure about any laws like stopping you from looking at someone's window. I mean, if someone's blinds are open, you can see that from the street, right? With a pair of binoculars. So I'm that's not true. sure what the that's oh, it's true. Yeah. Difference between like I said that like as if I do it. Oh, it's true. But my mom <laughs> yeah. always talked about in Chicago. So I don't know. I guess there's just a certain etiquette to just not be a creep. I think that's what I generally just follow. That's a really good moral code. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So some of the photos and videos you've created were impossible to shoot not that long ago. Like, do you think that drones have really changed the whole freelance video videography business in recent years? Absolutely. I think like before you wanted a shot, like some of the ones I've shot, like you would need to hire a helicopter with a camera operator. And that's way more expensive than just buying a drone and shooting it up into the sky and being able to get that shot real quick. So I think it's like with standard drones, obviously, I think it's kind of in a lot of situations replaced, replaced a lot of use cases for like using a helicopter. Yeah. Um, Save the fuel. Exactly. So, I mean, like, it's so easy to put a, put a drone up into the sky. You can really mimic a lot of the same moves that a helicopter can do. With FPV drones, you're able to get these angles that no one had previously been able to do before. Like how else would you be able to follow a drift car going again, going 90 miles per hour? How would you how would you do that before? You would have to have like another car with a camera arm following that that race car. Nowadays you can just take a drone up. So it's like you have all of these ways to make a production move way more efficiently. And definitely to save money in a lot of ways because you need less complicated gear to get some of these shots. Well, your videography is like kind of as a testament to that because it'll be like swooping down. Like you can get bird's eye view. You're all over the place. Like you're going on a journey. They're incredible. You're making, you've made videos. um, It seems like for a lot of the major cities in in the Midwest, certainly in Wisconsin, you got one in Milwaukee, you got Madison videos, you got Minneapolis. Um, When did you realize like you had a point of view that you wanted to share? I, I think like I, the point of view I've always wanted to share is that Wisconsin is such an underappreciated state. I think we have obviously tons of lakeshore on Lake Michigan, Lake Superior. We have the Driftless, the Mississippi River on the on the west side. And then you have these awesome hubs like Madison and Milwaukee that have so much life and culture. And so that that's kind of where I think it all started from was I just wanted to showcase Madison. I'm like, look how cool Madison is. Um, look how cool this, like this city that I feel is incredibly underappreciated is. And then it kind of bled into other areas where, um, you know, I started going to Milwaukee more. Again, you talked about Minneapolis. I did, I've done stuff with Pure Michigan. Um, I've done stuff in Chicago. And so it's like, I think people saw the work that I was doing in Madison and they like, come here, come here. Yeah, they, essentially. <laughs> and so that's, that's kind of how I've started doing a lot of travel and tourism work. Um, I'm going to Greece in two weeks. Um, Take me with you. <laughs> you will in a way. A, if yeah, you I, have post a them. Of, I have a list of like 20 people wanting to come. But <laughs> the point is like, like it's really cool. Like all of this stemmed from me just taking photo and video of my, what I consider my home now. Like Madison is definitely my home. Um, and people have just, I think, really appreciated that. And it's it's awesome to be able to work in the travel and tourism world where people are really passionate about where they live and they want to show the best parts of it. And that's what I've kind of latched on to. You're nailing it. Like I was, I just was like freaking out watching your, one of your Madison videos. And I think it was even the shorter version of it. I was like, Oh my gosh, I haven't seen that side of, you know, UW Madison. And it's so, so unique. And I heard you are working on a big project this year. It's basically another hype video for Madison. Can you talk about that? So I'm working as a production company to basically create the face of Madison when people go to like their webpage, when they're trying to attract people to come to the city, whether it be for work or leisure, like this video is going to be basically the start of a new Madison marketing push. And so I'm creating this gigantic video that will encompass 
hopefully all of what makes Madison so great. And so it's going to cover 12 days of shooting across this entire year. And then hopefully, uh, yeah, spring of next year, we'll have a final product. But it's really exciting because this is one of the biggest projects I've ever had. I mean, it goes beyond just shooting 12 days. I've the past few weeks, I've sat in like 40 hours of planning meetings, trying to figure out the strategy behind this video. B, like we have to showcase this whole city across three seasons, but I'm really excited. And we need real people of Madison to be in this. We want real business owners. We want real families, real couples, real dog owners, whatever it may be to be in this video. And that's I think that's a really cool part. We're not hiring actors for this. We want to showcase the real people of the city that make it so unique. And that's what I'm really excited about. That sounds so incredible. So it's going to be kind of like showcasing people doing their work. We want to go to a bunch of the iconic restaurants and businesses around here, right? And we want to showcase the not just the cool businesses or cool restaurants themselves, but we also want to showcase the business owners. We want to showcase some of the art and murals in the city because that's what makes it so vibrant in some places. But we also want to show the muralists. Um, we want to show really beautiful places in the city like uh, the Memorial Union Terrace or the Farmer's Market. But we just don't want to show the space, right? We want to show actual people enjoying those locations. I think that's like a really, really cool thing to do. Yeah, well, you're doing a tremendous job. You make me proud of Madison um, in, in new ways all the time. So, Sam, we really appreciate you joining us to tell us about your work and drones and, you know, how they work. Yeah, this is so awesome to chat about this. Thank you so much, Bianca. Sam Lee is a photographer in Madison. For a link to sign up to be in his next video, check out our show notes. <laughs> And here's what else Madison's talking about. The Madison School District. If you heard our interview last week about the fight to get information from Madison schools, we've got an update for you. A Dane County judge has ruled that the district can release the employee complaint that was filed about its own spokesman. An NBC 15 reporter requested those documents as part of a regular public records request. But the spokesman sued the district to try to prevent their release. But now the court has weighed in on the side of public access. And coming up this weekend is Festa Italia. It's put on by the Italian Workmen's Club of Madison, one of the oldest Italian clubs in the country. And yes, there's a pasta eating contest and a bocce tournament, plus music and cooking demonstrations. It's Friday through Sunday at McKee Farms Park in Fitchburg. That's all for today here on CityCast Madison. I'm Molly Stentz. If you enjoyed the show, why not share this podcast with someone who loves photography? We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. See you then.